a federal labor lawyer has written an opinion piece, and in their opinion, Uber and Lyft drivers are independent contractors, not employees. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and uh, yeah, I have to say up front, I am going to totally disagree with the following opinion and the following find, if you will, that this lawyer has written. I understand why they're writing it the way they are, but I think they're overlooking some key things. But seeing as how we need to have discussion about this, and this is a topic that's not going to be going away anytime soon, we're going to talk about it even if I technically disagree with it. But before we get into talking about any of that, let's have a word from our sponsors. Times are changing for gig workers and the gig economy, and there are a lot more gigs from a lot more companies than there used to be. That's why when people ask me where they can go to find resources for the gig economy, I recommend gigworkers.com. At this site, you can see what other gig workers are doing and discover better opportunities from industries, companies, resources, and even and even a forum where you can talk with other people in the gig economy. Gigworkers.com is a great resource site. Whether you work for Uber, Lyft, Postmates, DoorDash, Tax Rabbit, Thumbtack, Upwork, whatever, there's a gig for you and there's a forum for you on gigworker.com. Gigworker.com for all your gigs. So this is from The Verge, which I I kind of debated which news organization I wanted to read this from, but I kind of feel like The Verge was, ironically of all things, probably the more balanced of them. I mean, when I read like the Market Watch articles and stuff, they were all giddy, giddy um, for this. Uh, the Verge is a little bit more subdued and for good reason. But the ar- headline says it right there, Uber drivers are freelancers, not employees, federal labor lawyer says. Uber drivers are independent contractors, not employees of the ride-hailing company, the Federal Labor Board's general counsel said in an opinion released May 14th. It's another sign that drivers and labor advocates face a steep, if impossible, hill to climb to force Uber to reclassify its drivers as employees. The opinion, authored April 16th by Jamie Jamie Sofire, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Associate General Counsel at the National Labor Relations Board, so this is a big deal, means that the drivers will have a much harder time trying to form a union, file labor complaints, or seek protections from the federal government. Because the National Labor Relations Board actually does deal with some of this, and by writing this opinion, they're effectively saying, we're not going to help you. Um, This is what we feel you are, and this is what we're going to enforce if you bring this issue to our doorstep. And they write, Drivers virtually complete control of their cars, work schedules, and login locations together with their freedom to work for competitors of Uber provided them with significant entrepreneurial opportunity. On any given day, at any free moment, Uber X drivers could decide how best to serve their economic objectives. By fulfilling ride requests through the app, working for competing rideshare service, or pursuing a different venture altogether. All right. Look, I'm not going to lie. Of course, that makes sense. It's frankly the main reason I've been saying for so long, until recently, that we were independent contractors, not employees, that we were freelance, that we weren't employees, but. Here's the thing. They're, of course, not looking at other aspects of this because here's the thing. I would never think about suing eBay or Amazon, for example, for being an employee as a third party vendor. At least not. I mean, maybe it'd be different if I was like on the fulfilled by Amazon program. But as just a regular seller, I never sue them for impeding on my entrepreneurial freedoms because I control the prices. I control what types of shipping I want to offer. I can pick what items I want to list. I can do all those things. They control the fee and they can overcharge the fee, but like I can charge more for the item to compensate for that fee. So I'm very much still in control of my stores, my e-commerce stores. On Uber, yes, I can get on or off whenever I want. I can work as many out as many hours as I want or as little hours as I want. Or, as they say, I could pursue a different venture altogether. Mainly YouTube and Postmates. But if I'm on Uber's platform, they control the price. Uh, they 
actually forced me to take Uber Pool, which I should have the right to say, um, no, I don't want to take Uber Pool, but they make me take Uber Pool. They deactivate me without, you know, a fair trial. Now, here's the thing. Another thing I want to point out is like eBay and Amazon won't just deactivate your account because you get a complaint. There is a process involved with, you know, a, whenever there's a dispute. So until that dispute is resolved, you can still sell on eBay and Amazon. Now, I know, I know some of you are going to comment they can't do that when it's a serious charge. I acknowledge that. I acknowledge they have to take responsibility. I'm glad they do. But the bottom, it, that's still an aspect of control where if it's truly your business, you're, you should, in theory, be allowed to run it until the matter is resolved. So, although that's the more complicated situation. Uh, the destination filter, I mean, they screw around with us on that. And heck, they, they even said... Like, until they dropped it because it was stupid. Hey, we're going to take 30% of your fare if you use a destination filter. And it was a penalty. It's like, well, that's my business. Why are you charging a penalty? There are... They can actually... Here's the thing. Like, they control what cars are allowed on the platform. So, Uber controls so many aspects of this that I think getting on and off whenever you want and being able to work for other competitors doesn't make you a contractor. In fact, that is probably the more baffling thing because if someone has two jobs, if someone works at McDonald's and Burger King, does that mean they're not employees anymore? I mean, I, I know I'm being facetious and it's more complicated than that. I, I know I'm being very, very sarcastic, but at the same token, anyway, let's continue. Um, it's the latest sign that the federal government agrees with Uber's classification of its drivers. The Department of Labor issued an opinion recently saying that gig workers like Uber drivers are contractors ineligible for minimum wages and overtime pay. A federal judge ruled basically the same way last year in what is said to be the first classification of Uber drivers under federal law. Now, it should be noted that the opinion piece, like this thing uh, right here, this was not in relation to a case or anything. This was just the National Labor Relations Board issuing an opinion and basically stating what they would not be helping with. They would not help drivers unionize or seek employment classification because, in their opinion, we're freelancers, so they're not going to help. But this isn't actually like a law set in stone yet. It It is something that can very easily be cited in future cases, though, you know, because there's going to be more cases like this. Um, the opinion lines up with Uber's own stance on its drivers. The companies classify them as... Well, anyway, um, that's, we've all heard that part before. We are focused on improving the quality of the, of the and security of independent work while preserving the flexibility drivers and couriers tell us they value. Yeah, but they also would value a bigger paycheck. Uber said it had settled with a large majority of the 60,000 drivers in the U.S. who filed arbitration demands over their employment status. Uber said the settlement will cost it between 146 to seven. 170 million according to its IPO filing, which again, I don't know where that number came from or, you know, who's going to get that money. And earlier this year, a federal judge in California ruled um, drivers for Grubhub. Last week, hundreds of Uber drivers went on strike, um, which I was at, met a lot of people there. A lot of those people deserve a lot more than what they're getting treated. I, I personally, here's what I personally hope at this point. I really hope a lot of them move on. Um, I mean, I'll fight for as long as I can. Clearly, I'm making money other places, so I can afford to do that. Um, I just hit my um, Apple uh, remote. And I will report on this as long as possible, but Uber and Lyft, the only way for them to wake up is p people just need to walk away from this. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If all the drivers start walking away, Uber and Lyft would improve their payment and everything for you guys but because they're willing to work it there you have it let's look at this final um let, let's look at this final um paragraph this nlrb advice memo ignores the reality of uber's relationship with its drivers and the myriad of ways in which it controls the terms of conditions of their work said laura padden senior staff attorney with the national employment law project 
So by the way, the National Employment Law Project disagrees. That's why this isn't the end all be all. This is again, just an opinion piece. But it's hardly a surprise coming from the Trump administration, which has shamefully sided with big money corporate interests over working people at every turn. Well, I'm not going to touch that one, although it's not 100% false. I'll, I'll at least say that much. So, anyway, I'm sure this disappoints a lot of people watching this channel. Especially the people who, you know, I met them at the strike. They're still, they really want to do this. They really want to continue working for Uber Lyft. They want to make it their livelihood. And it's just... They they get they get smacked down like or swatted almost like a fly multiple times a year, and these are good, honest, hardworking people who who are totally being exploited, and everyone, including the passengers and the government, knows they're being exploited, and yet they don't. People don't really want to fight for them. So the opinion is not surprising. It's disappointing, but not surprising. But again, this isn't a law, this isn't a judge, this isn't a court case, this is just an opinion piece. And we all know that what it pretty much says is, hey, if you want to fight more for employment rights, don't go to the National Labor Relations Board. They're not going to help you. You might want to go to the National Employment Law Project. They probably will do something to help you if they can. So that's where we're going to leave that there. What do you folks think about this? Agree? Disagree? I know people have a lot of opinions on this. So comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even if it's $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas prices are getting you a little blue, check out the GetUpside app. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase you make. Check out the Entrepreneur Vlogs channel. There's new content every day, including stories we didn't have time to cover here, so we covered them there. And finally, if you want to talk to me or other fellow rideshare, um, you know, gig economy worker people, uh, check us out on Facebook at the Entrepreneur Hangouts. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.